Say hello to the AmpliGame SC3 gaming audio mixer by Fifine. Fifine sent out their AM8 gaming microphone recently and we thought it was pretty good. They also sent over the SC3 so we could pair these up and see how they perform together. Let's jump right into the video. It comes well presented in the stylish box and we're greeted with a quick start guide inside. It is quite an in-depth guide and it is worthwhile reading. We also get a aux cable. This is the 3.5 millimeter size connection and it's the three pole variant. Also included is a premium USB-C lead. This also has the adapter on so it can be USB-A or USB-C. I love that Fifine do this with their USB lead. I wish more companies did this. This is useful. And finally, we have the audio mixer itself. It is mostly a plastic construction, but at this price point, it is to be expected. It is currently on offer at £45.59 in the UK at the time of recording. In. It is usually around £50, which is definitely in the affordable range. The sliders feel okay, pretty good overall, yet there is a little bit of wobble left and right, but the actual movement, the sliding feature, feels pretty good and smooth. There's no flex or creak in the board whatsoever, and although it is plastic, there's no unwanted scorches or marks or anything that I can see. It all looks nice and clean. We've got a little RGB bar on the bottom, and we've also got the buttons on the top that also all light up with the RGB. All of the buttons feel nice, they all feel responsive. I've got to say though, it is quite a rigid plastic construction. It isn't creaky or anything like that, it just feels lightweight and it is, like I said, made of plastic. All of your inputs are clearly labelled. You've got the on-the-go slash PC USB-C. You've also got the line out the headphone, the line in, and the headset. We will talk about the headphones and headset later because there is a slight difference and it does matter. There's also a toggle switch for dynamic mic or condenser mic. And there's also a six mil audio jack and a female XLR port. Looks nice and simple enough. Let's take it over to the PC then and set this up. Like I mentioned, there's a six mil audio jack here. So technically you could also plug musical instruments into this thing, but we're gonna run with the XLR cable. We wanna test the actual audio quality. It's the microphone that we're going to be using here. Nice and easy to set up. You simply plug in your cables, plug in your USB-C, really simple. As soon as you plug it in, your computer should recognize it straight away. It all lights up nice and brightly and looks pretty good. The RGB is really simple to control. You can single press the button here. This will go through a few different modes and then you can select if you want solid colors to match your theme or you can just let it cycle through the rainbow like I do. Let's do some audio tests then. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. So that is through XLR at the moment. Okay, so this is an audio test for the Fifine AM8 gaming microphone. This is with the Fifine audio mixer included. This is over XLR connection instead of the USB-C. This is an audio test for the Fifine AM8 gaming microphone. This is just via USB-C in the volume set to around 70%. You can also press the 48 volt phantom power. So this is with the 48 volt phantom power. I'm using the XLR connection to the Fifine microphone. To be honest, I don't notice much of a difference when I'm uh, pressing the phantom power and when we're off, right, these, they're pretty good as in sliding terms, but they've got a little bit of wobble to them. I wish they didn't have that bit of wobble to them. Entirely happy about that wobble, but it's not the end of the world. The voice mods should be pretty cool. So first we've got male. So this is the male voice. This is the female voice. I don't know what makes this one female, but girl, did you see the look on the face? Robot. Robot voice. The monster. The monster voice. The baby voice. This would most likely be the best one for trolling and games and things like that. And then Elder. Yeah. Sit on the porch, bark at everybody, and then back to mail. So then you would hold this to deactivate that. Whatever selection you use will be illuminated. These custom ones are pretty cool. What you do is you hold it down until it starts flashing. There we go. And then I think we do the recording. And then you can play back your own custom sounds as well. There's four of these. The electric allows us to do a auto tune. 
So you press it once to cycle through all the chords. You start off with an A, and then move to a B flat, then a B, then a C, then a D flat, then a D. But it doesn't tell you whether they're major or minor chords, but it doesn't matter. But you can switch between them by simply just pressing this icon. This should switch between all of the auto tunes. I don't know whether it's making much difference. We'll see in the editing software in a minute. Uh, at the moment, I'm just cycling through them. I probably uh, won't use these that much. And then you would hold that to turn it off. The only one you don't need to hold to turn off is the 48 volt. That one you just press on and off. Same for the RGB. But if you want the RGB off, then you can hold the button down. Everything still works and you still have full control of the mixer. As you can see, we've still got the audio signal and you can control your volumes and stuff still. It's just that we turn the RGB off. We're going to move on to the headsets and the headphones then. These are slightly different. The headphones are for monitoring your audio. The headset is for gaming. I found two small issues here. Basically, you can only control the level of audio that's coming into the device. So you don't actually get any control in game. So you can't change your chat volume you can't change your music volume or anything like that unless you're using a separate input device like a mobile phone or a tablet that would give you a little bit more control but still you are limited it does work well in OBS simply go to your input devices the SC3 will show up go ahead and add it to your list and then you also want to remember to capture that audio if you want to refer back to it for any reason later on for content creation and things like that it's also all included in the instructions manual, but I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find OBS setup guides that can show you much better than what I can in regards to getting your stream audio set up properly. I didn't have any issues whatsoever. The only thing I would note is that you can't control the audio levels in the game or inside of OBS. You can only control them from the mixer, like I said a little earlier in the video. All of the controls, the mute features, the line in volume and the headphone volume, they all seem to work really well. And you can't really fault the functionality of it. It is basic. Now, one thing I will say about this is in 2024, I don't know about you guys, but I'm trying to clear cables up. I don't really like the idea of cables all over my desk. And one thing I've noticed with this is we are running a lot of cables. We're using two AUX cables, a USB and an XLR cable. If you're going to use a smartphone or a tablet as an input device and you want to use your headphones and microphone, you're talking about four or five cables minimum. And for me, that's not really viable. I don't like the cables pinning me to my desk. I like to have Bluetooth so I can walk away from my desk and continue filming and doing other things while I'm listening to music at the same time. That's not to say that I think this is a bad product. I actually think it's quite a fairly priced, reasonable item that you could get some good value from. I would also say, although this is marketed towards gamers, I actually think it might be better for small content creators that are using multiple devices, like say a phone and a tablet to do live streams and things like that. In those instances, I think it's going to be very, very useful. As in terms of a replacement for a Go XLR or something like that, it, uh, personally, I don't think it's quite up to that standard. But again, it is a lot cheaper. Everything works quite well on the board. I have no complaints in general. There is a, I wouldn't say a wide range of connectivity, but there is some options. We do have, like I said, the line in, line out headphones, things we've spoke about. Overall, it's pretty good. I could say for the price, for small content creators, small streamers, people starting out, then it may be a good investment. It does definitely improve your audio quality with the XLR connection, and it does give you a little bit more control over your mic levels, so that alone may be a benefit to some people. As always, I'll leave links in the description. These are affiliate links, and you are directly supporting the channel by using them. If you found any part of this video helpful at all, or if you enjoyed any part of it, or just enjoy supporting small creators like me, consider leaving a like on the video, subscribing to the channel with your notifications on, that way you never miss any future uploads. Thanks to each and every one of you for being here today, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. I'm Craig, this is Really Random Reviews, and I'll see you in my next video.